Hello everyone, my name is Serafi and I'm happy to meet you all. And today we are playing Phantom Knights. Now Phantom Knights are a very dangerous deck in the meta right now, could even be high tier. I really didn't think too much of the skill when I first saw it come out. It seemed to me to be basically a worse version of Trees and Phantom. There was one thing that I and a lot of other people missed, however, and that is the new skill, Raider's Rebellion, puts the Phantom Knights of Break Sword in your graveyard, which the other skill did not do. And that has created some interesting interactions. So, let's take a look at the new deck and how you can play Phantom Knights moving forward. The skill is called Raider's Rebellion. You cannot special summon monsters with a level except Phantom Knights monsters, and you can only activate one effect of an Xyz monster during each of your opponent's turns. It's a pretty rough restriction, but it does allow us to play a very powerful skill, so let's talk about the other options. Once per duel, you can send one monster from your hand or field to the graveyard, then send one the Phantom Knights monster from your deck to the graveyard, and set one Raider's Unbreakable Mind from outside your deck to your field, and it can be activated this turn. Raider's Unbreakable Mind allows us to destroy a card when a monster is Xyz summoned, which is uh, using a Dark Xyz monster as material, which is pretty good. Then you can send one Dark Xyz monster from your field to the graveyard, then play one Dark Rebellion Xyz dragon from your extract to your field in face down defense position. Its battle position can be changed. Cool. So, we make Break Sword, we send it to the graveyard, we play Dark Rebellion, it has no materials. Now we can make both Dark Requiem Xyz dragon and another monster. And that monster is going to be basically any level 4. So, the previous skill allowed us to access cards like Dark Rock Living Seas Dragon and other rank 5 dark monsters, of which there are very few. There's like Adrius and a few others, but nothing really too powerful. However, since we have the ability to revive the Phantom Knights of Break Sword from our graveyard, and it will have no materials when we revive it, that means that we can go into rank 4 dark monsters. And there are many more rank 4s than there are rank 3s. In particular, one rank 4 stands out among the rest, and that monster is Evil Swarm Ophion. Evil Swarm Ophion, uh, while this card has Xyz material, level 5 or higher monsters cannot be special summoned. At all. That's just, that's just an uh, ongoing effect of that card. So your opponent could effect veil it, but it only works on your turn. They could ghost chill it, but it, again, only until the end of your turn. The only real way they can get around Ophion is by either playing a card like Dark Hole, by playing a card like Book of Moon, maybe by playing a card like Forbidden Droplet, but as long as they don't have an option like that, or um, you know, if they do and you play a card like Forbidden Lance, they're going to be in a tough spot. A lot of powerful decks right now rely on summoning high-level monsters. Shirinui does, Zombies do, Luna Lights do, uh, you're going to be seeing Blue Eyes trying to summon high-level monsters, you're going to be seeing Orcus try to summon high-level monsters. You know, every deck that you could think of is summoning some high-level monsters right now, except for like Live Twins and Sky Strikers, basically. So, very heavy linked focus decks and low rank Xyz decks like this one are not affected. And to be fair, you know, you're going to see a lot of Phantom Knights players, you're going to see probably some Raid Raptor players. So, Ophion is not like an end-all, be-all answer to the meta, but it is a very powerful card against a lot of decks. So, the fact that we can get it so easily, along with other cards, is pretty good. For the main deck, we have the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak. Uh, every Phantom Knights card has an effect that activates when you banish it, so I'll just go over these real quick. If it's in attack position, you can target a dark monster in your field, switch this monster to defense position, and then the dark monster gains 800 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's turn. And when you banish it, you get to draw a Phantom Knights card. Uh, Ragged Gloves, if a Dark Xyz monster is made using this card once per turn, it gains 1,000 attack points permanently, and you can banish this card to send a Phantom Knights card from your deck to the graveyard. Pretty good. Torch Scales, uh, you can discard a card to mill a Phantom Knights card from your deck, which means that you end up with two Phantom Knights cards in your graveyard. Really, really strong effect. And then if another Phantom Knights card is in your graveyard, in your graveyard is banished while this card is in the graveyard, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. So Torn Scales, limit 3, really, really strong card, 
You can technically play this deck with only one copy of it. I think three is probably ideal, but I only have two. Um, I think it's fine. Silent Boots. If you control a Phantom Knights monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can banish this card from your graveyard to add one Phantom Knight spell or trap from your deck to the hand. Both of those effects are very important for how we play the game. And then lastly, we have the Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves as a one of. If a Phantom Knights monster is special summoned to your field, you can special summon this card from your hand. And then you can increase the level of the card by one if you want to. You can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon one Phantom Knights monster from your hand, except Stained Greaves. Then you can increase this level by one. You can only use each effect once per turn. Cool. So. Lots of good cards, lots of great ways to make a rank 3, rank 4 pop off. Let's keep going. The Phantom Knights rank up magic launch. During the main phase, you can target a Dark Exceeds monster you control with no Exceeds materials. Special summon from your extra deck one Dark Exceeds monster that is one rank higher than that monster by using it as Exceeds material, and if you do, attach this card as an additional Exceeds material. And then during your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target a Dark Exceeds monster you control and attach one the Phantom Knights monster from your hand to that monster as Exceeds material, which is pretty good. So you can use this card to make your Dark Requiem Exceeds Dragon, or your Evil Swarm Ophion, or both. Forbidden Lance, protect your Evil Swarm Ophion from back row. Uh, and then we have Phantom Knight's Rank Up Magic Force. During the main phase, you can banish one or more Dark Monsters from your graveyard, target a Dark Exceeds monster you control, and special summon from your extra deck one, the Phantom Knight's Raid Raptor, or Exceeds Dragon Exceeds monster, whose rank equals the targeted monsters plus rank plus the number of monsters you banished. Uh, so, okay. The reason why we were playing Rank Up Magic Force is because Raider's Unbreakable Mind can set this card from your deck, which will allow you to do two rank ups in one turn. Pretty good. Phantom Knight's Wing, target one monster on the field, it gains 500 attack points. Also, the first time the target would be destroyed by battle or card effect this turn, it is not destroyed. That's really good. You can chain it to a destruction effect, and it will protect that monster. You can banish this card from your graveyard, target one Phantom Knight's monster in your graveyard and special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field, only once per turn. So you play this card so that you can mill it with Torn Scales and get back your Brick Sword. Phantom Knight's Sword, same thing. If you could activate it, it targets a monster on the field, that monster gains 800 attack points, and if it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy Phantom Sword instead. But more importantly, you can banish this card to target a Phantom Knight's monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So these two cards are ways that we can get Brick Sword back from our graveyard onto the field. Lastly, we are playing Infestation Terminus. This card is stupid. Target one Elsewhere monster you control. Two cards your opponent controls. Banish the first, and if you do, bounce the seconds. That's really, really good. Now, it's important to understand. This card requires two targets. Two. And you cannot target a card that you could not bounce. I found this out the hard way. So, if your opponent is, has one monster out, right, and they play Cosmic Cyclone targeting Infestation Terminus, you cannot activate Infestation Terminus in response because you could not return Cosmic Cyclone to the hand, even though you could target it. It's really, really weird. I don't understand it. But regardless, so you can't bounce a card that would be unable to be bounced. So you have to target two legal targets and then shuffle them both back into your opponent's hand while also returning or banishing your Evil Storm Ophion. This card's really good because it can be searched off of Evil Storm Ophion. Basically, your deck is only 19 cards. Uh, this back row is really insane. If your opponent manages to negate your Ophion, or they manage to try and attack it, something like that, you know, you use this effect after the Floodgate matters to kind of close the game out. It's really good. For the extra deck, we have Arc Rebellion Exceeds Dragon. This Exceeds Summon card cannot be destroyed by card effects. You can attach one material from this card. This card gains attack equal to the total attack of all the monsters on the field. Then if it has a Dark Exceeds Monsters material, negate the effects of all their face up monsters on the field permanently. After this effect resolves, you cannot declare attacks with other monsters for the rest of the turn. You can only use this effect once per turn. So, uh, Arc Rebellion, its effect prevents you from um, attacking with anyone else, but only if the effect is not negated. If your opponent plays Effect Failure on this card, then it doesn't get the attack boost, it doesn't get to negate anything, but it also does not prevent your other monsters from attacking, which is pretty nice. Uh, this is how you get 10,000 attack points and kill your opponent one hit, which is amazing. I love this card. Dark Requiem Exceeds Dragon. If this card has Dark Rebellion Exceeds Dragon as materials, it gains these effects. Once per turn, you can detach one Exceeds material from this card, target one face-up monster your opponent controls, change its attack points to zero, and if you do, this card gains monster attack points equal to that monster's original attack points. That's really good. You can use it to OTK if your opponent has a monster with at least 1,000 attack points. And then during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can attach one Exceeds material from this card and negate the activation, and if you do, destroy the card. And if you do that, you can special summon an Exceeds monster from your graveyard. So this is important. 
if you use Dark Requiem Seas Dragon on a grave, Graveyard Effect on a Hand Trap, on something like that, where the opponent has to discard the card, or it's already in the Graveyard, then you do not get to Special Summon after you've negated the effect, because you did not destroy the card. That's really frustrating, but that's how the deck works. That's how the card works. Next up, we have Raider's Knight. Two Dark Monsters, you detach one material from this card to rank it up into your Arc Rebellion. Really, really good. Ophion, uh, once per turn you can detach material from this card to draw your Terminus. Nice. Dark Rebellion, detach two materials to Riroku. I mean, it's not really that relevant, you just make Dark Rebellion so that you can rank it up into Dark Rebellion Command. Leviar, the Sea Dragon, a very common card to see in Phantom Knights. If, uh... Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card and target one of your banished level 4 lower monsters and special summon it. With the way the skill works, you usually have at least two monsters banished before you can even exceed summon. So it, this card could very easily get you an additional body on the board. And like, If you have three bodies that you could summon, then this card will essentially be a way to get a fourth body out so you can make two exceeds monsters. That's not as relevant for this deck as it is for the previous version of Phantom Knights. But this card could also get you some heavy value if it lasts an additional turn. It's not the worst card to make if you have, for example, Phantom Knight's Wing in your hand to protect it. But I haven't seen too many uses for it yet. Then lastly, we have Break Sword. Break Sword is dumb. Two level threes. Once per turn, you can detach one Exceeds material from this card, target one card you control, one card your pump controls, and destroy them. That is a soft once per turn, by the way. You can target two Phantom Knights monsters in your graveyard if this card is destroyed with the same level, special summon them and increase their levels by one, but you are locked into darks for the rest of the turn. Neither of those effects is a hard once per turn, so you can Phantom Knights break sword, pop, get two monsters out, they're both level four, Exceed summon, make another break sword, pop, go into another rank four. It's really, really cool, really, really easy. That's the deck. Cool, let's take a look at the replay. Alright, we are going first against the Luna Lights. I did not explain the combo in the deck portion because it's a pretty long combo, kind of hard to follow. So I just wanted to show you guys in game. Alright, we're going first. We have Ragged Gloves, Silent Boots, Torn Scales, and Ancient Cloak in our hand. Fantastic. Activate the skill. We pitch the Torn Scales and we send the Ancient Cloak from our deck to the graveyard. Set the Raider's Unbreakable Mind. We activate Raider's Unbreakable Mind. Then we're going to activate Ancient Cloak's effect. So we banish it from our graveyard to draw our Stained Greaves. Now we can trigger Torn Scales because a card was banished while Torn Scales is in the graveyard. Torn Scales now special summons itself. That triggers Stained Greaves since a Phantom Knight was special summoned while Stained Greaves was in the hand. You special summon Stained Greaves. We'll activate Torn Scales' this effect. We discard the Ragged Gloves to mill a card. We're going to mill the Phantom Knight's wing. Ragged Gloves' this effect. We banish it from the graveyard to mill sword. Okay. Now we're going to Exceed Summon, make our Break Sword. Then we activate our skill. So we send the uh, Break Sword and the two materials that we used to make it to set our Dark Rebellion Exceeds, right? Flip Dark Rebellion. Then we're going to Normal Summon, Ancient Cloak, and Special Summon Silent Boots. Now, at this point, I have to make another Exceeds monster because I forgot to actually use Silent Boots as a material, so I can't use its effect to search because it's not in the graveyard yet. So I'm going to make Leviathan here. So make Leviathan so that I can detach a material and get our uh, uh, Silent Boots in the graveyard. We're going to special summon the Ancient Cloak because we have to special summon something. And we're going to draw the Rank of Magic launch. Now that we've done that, we can banish the Wing from our graveyard to target the Break Sword and bring it back with no materials. Now we can activate Rank of Magic launch. And we will go into our Evil Sworn Ophion. Now we activate Raider's Unbreakable Mind's effect. So we Exceed Summon using a Dark Exceeds monster as material. We get to destroy a card on the field. The card we're going to destroy is Raider's Unbreakable Mind itself. That will allow us to set a Rank Up Magic spell from our deck, which will be the Rank Up Magic Phantom Force. Then we're going to activate Ophion's effect. We detach one material to draw the Terminus, which will set. Then we activate Ancient Cloak's effect. Since it's an attack position, we change it to defense position, and Ophion gains 800 attack points until the end of the opponent's turn. Alright, now remember, we're playing against Lunar Lights, so the opponent cannot special summon any monster that is level 5 or higher by any means. This is not like uh, Steel Swarm Roach, where you could negate a summon that was an inherent summon. This is just no special summons at all if the monster is level 5 or higher. That means no fusion summon, it means no synchro summon, it means no ritual summons. You know, you can't do anything unless the monster does not have a level or that level is 4 or less. 
So the opponent will be able to exceed summon, but they will not be able to make uh, Cat Dancer, they won't be able to make Saber Dancer, they won't be able to make Panther Dancer, and they won't be able to make Leo Dancer. Let's see what they do. The opponent is going to normal summon Emerald Bird, and they're going to activate Emerald Bird's effect to pitch a card. We are going to chain Rake Up Magic Force to this so that we can make our Dark Requiem make Seize Dragon. We banish one card from our graveyard, rank up into the Dark Requiem. The opponent pitches Lunalite Crimson Fox and activates its effect. So when Crimson Fox is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, it can target one monster your opponent controls and reduce its attack points to zero until the end of the turn. The opponent is going to target our Evil Swarm Ophion. They are doing this so that they can bait our Dark Requiem and Seize Dragons negate. However, I have no reason to stop this. I know that my opponent is not going to be able to get lethal because they can't summon anything that could give them lethal. I don't have to worry about Ophion having zero attack points in attack position because if my opponent moves to the battle phase, then I don't need to worry about Ophion's Floodgate anymore because the monster at that point will not be useful to me. There's no main phase too. If the opponent is in the battle phase, they could attack my Ophion. They can't summon anything else for the rest of the turn. So I can just go ahead and use my Infestation card at that point. So I'll let the card resolve. Ophion now at zero attack points. Lunalite Alleviation. Pitch the Black Sheep so that they cannot use Black Sheep anymore to mill the Yellow Martin. Activate Yellow, uh, Lunalite Tiger and use its effect to revive the Crimson Fox. Yellow Martin bounces the Tiger to uh, special summon itself and exceeds into the Brotherhood of the Fire Fist Tiger King. Now the opponent is going to activate the effect to just draw Tenki for starters. However, it has a second effect, and the second effect is to negate all monsters on the field that do not have Beast Warrior as a type. I'm not going to let that happen. So I don't care about which effect I'm negating, I am just going to destroy this monster. So I will use Dark Requiem's effect to simply negate and destroy the Tiger King. Now he can't negate my Ophion. The opponent is going to activate Tiger again, use its effect, Special Summon, and it sees into Abyss Dweller. The opponent is obviously hoping that I will not be able to come back after destroying my Ophion and then potentially stopping all of my graveyard effects. However, I'm just going to activate Terminus in response to them attacking, bounce the Ophion to bounce Abyss Dweller and the Lunalite Tiger, as I explained. My opponent can no longer special summon because they are in the battle phase. There's no main phase two. They understand that they've lost the game and they can see. There you go. So this is the power of Phantom Knights. This is the power of a deck that gets a free negate as well as a free uh, floodgate that stops all high-level monsters from being summoned off of just two cards. One Torn Skill, or one Phantom Knight's name so that you can trigger the skill, and then one card to discard with Torn Skills. That's all you have to do. You don't even have to use your normal summon. Uh, that's the deck. My name is Serafi, and I was thrilled to have all of you with me.